Well, I after I had had the experience where I went out to the staging areas where souls await rebirth and recognized it and felt the ecstasy, I decided that one of the things that I wanted to do was become involved with a study group that studied death and worked with dying people. And I actually did do that, and I, I worked with several people who were dying, uh, doing rituals for them to help them understand what they would be experiencing and that it was not a terrifying experience. And one friend of mine that was dying of liver cancer was in a state of where she was heavily with morphine and was kind of lapsing in and out of consciousness. And she told me she was scared, that she was really scared. And I held her hand and I felt like I wanted to go to that place where I had been and send that energy to her that it's not terrifying. And I, I held her hand and we sat there and we didn't say anything for the longest time. And I just tried to, in my mind, recreate that experience and communicate to her on a soul level what was happening. And she seemed to fall asleep afterwards and there wasn't really anything that she said. Um, but then the next time I came to see her, she was, she was kind of happy and she said that she'd accepted what was gonna happen, that she'd given away, you know, she told her brothers and sisters, I want you to have this, I want you to have that. And she said, it, it's not scary to me anymore. Whether I had anything to do with that, I don't know, but um, I felt that it gave me an empathy to what's going on when people are dying and that I want to communicate that it's it's not terrifying. Living is the terrifying thing. Living and going through life every day is really hard. Being out there in the ecstasy, in the white light, that's beautiful.